There are more ways to show drawings in front of or behind each other than you probably realise, including changing them during an animation. And that's what we'll look at today. Hello ladies and gents, and welcome to a look at drawing order in OpenToons, showing drawings in front of and behind each other. And if you're new here, my name's Darren T, and I make weekly tutorials for OpenToons, and the occasional animation. And if that sounds like the kind of thing you're into, why not subscribe to follow along. There's five distinct ways to define which drawings sit in front of other drawings. Using drawing groups, setting the stacking order inside a plastic mesh, the column order, setting the column stacking order, and finally the z-axis. So let's look at these one at a time. And as with all my videos, there's links in the description below to skip to any of these sections. So groups in a single drawing. These aren't as obvious as it's almost a hidden feature, but are the first place to determine the drawing order. And it's a hidden set of layers within a single drawing that you can move the lines and shapes forwards and backwards. And quite often you can use a single drawing with these layers instead of multiple columns. I could put together a whole video on groups, but I'll try to speed through them now to give you an idea. Let me show you. So if I had a vector layer first, because groups are part of a vector layer, and then draw two circles. Now you notice that the auto group tick box isn't ticked at the minute, so let's draw them on here. So if I try and fill a circle that hasn't been drawn as a group, it just fills in this section up to the lines. So this works kind of like a Venn diagram. So if I fill on the left, it fills the left section, and in the centre, just the centre section. So if you wanted to fill the whole circle, you'd have to move it to a group or a layer as I think about them. So the simple way to do that is to choose the select tool, select the line, right click and then choose group. And now it's a group, this right hand side circle is on a separate layer to the left hand side circle. So if we fill the right hand side, it fills the circle. Likewise if we fill the left hand circle, it fills the whole circle even though the lines are crossing and even though the left circle isn't part of a group, and that's because the right hand circle has been moved to an actual group. So apart from grouping after the fact, whenever you draw shapes using the geometric tool, you can group them from the start. So you simply tick the box saying auto group, and then when you draw the circles, that's drawn in one group, and the second circle is drawn in a separate group. So if I fill one of the circles, it fills the whole circle, and same for the second. And a group isn't just for a single shape, you can group multiple shapes or lines together, so let me just draw a few of those. Okay, so each of these shapes are individual groups. If you want to group more than one together, you can click and drag to select the shapes, right click and group those together. And now these are all one single group to be moved around together. Likewise, the green and blue circle, if we just group those two, we can right click and choose group. And they're a single group. And as I say, if you think of groups as layers, you can move these layers inside a single drawing in front of or behind other layers. So if I move this group of red circles behind the green and blue, and if you want to bring the red circles in front of the green and blue, you can select the circles, right click and choose bring to front or bring forward. And bring to front brings the selected shapes to the very front of all the layers they're behind, or bring forward moves them one layer at a time towards the front. So let's choose bring to front and you'll see the red circles are now in front of the green and blue. Now these groups or layers can't be seen visually anywhere so you can't see which objects are in front of or behind other objects at the minute. Although there is work on the timeline that might allow this in the future. So there's two ways to find out which shapes or objects are in each group. And the first one is just to select a line and you'll see all of the other items in the same group selected. And the second is to double click on the line which allows you to step into a group. So that dims the colours on all of the shapes that aren't part of this group. And then you can edit the items in this group. And as you remember, the three circles are separate objects. So if we select each of them, they're now selectable individually. And you can move them, edit them to whatever size you need to, change the colours, that kind of thing. But what we can also do is, we can highlight just two of the objects and group those. So now we've got groups within groups. So the single red circle is on its own to be edited. 
and the other two red circles are in their own separate group. So if you double click those, you can now edit these individually. And to step out of the groups, you simply double click away from any of the shapes. And finally, it's worth mentioning, if you use the Auto In-Between tool, that works on groups. So if you've got a slightly complex object, it might be worth grouping items together or putting them into individual groups to help OpenTunes know which shapes change into other shapes. So the second method for defining the order of your drawings is with a stacking order on a plastic mesh level. So by default, the drawing order or the grouping order is shown for the character in a plastic mesh. So here I drew the red rectangle first, followed by the blue and followed by the green, which is why the blue and the green sit in front of the red. And I've already built the skeleton, so if I move the blue rectangle, that goes behind the green. Likewise, if I move the green, that goes in front of the blue, which again reinforces the order it was drawn in. But if you want to change this order during an animation, you can change the stacking order, which you can get to in two places, on the toolbar here, next to where it says SO, and also in the function editor. So if you want to change the order for your whole animation, where the blue leg always goes in front of the green leg, all you need to do is to select that vertex and then change the stacking order to be a larger number. So by default, all drawings are on stacking level zero. And as the drawings move in front, the stacking order increases and as they move behind, it decreases. So if you want the blue in front of the green, just change the stacking order to one. So let's place that there first and then change the stacking order to one and the blue will sit in front of the green. And to change it back, you can go to the default order of zero, or to force it behind, go to a negative number. So we'll go minus one. And to change this drawing animation, you just change it on the frame number you want it to change. So for instance, at the start, the blue rectangle can be behind, and then by frame 12, we could change it to be in front. So as you go through the animation, it stays behind, and then goes in front. And obviously you'd use this in combination with any other movements. So for instance, if the blue and green rectangles are legs, and we want to have the blue leg kicking in front of and then behind of the green, we can set up this movement. So with just a movement, the blue goes behind the green and back, and behind the green and back. So to make the blue rectangle move in front of the green, we can simply change the stacking order during the animation. So at some point before the blue goes in front of the green, we can add this key and you can do that by selecting the vertex and then change the second order on the toolbar but because we've got some key set and because we've got their default interpolation set the best way to do it is using the function editor so let's bring that up so we want to change the stacking order of the vertex at the bottom of the blue rectangle so if you hover over that you find out its name is vertex number three so we look at the plastic mesh column expand that out then look at the skeleton folder expand that and under vertex 3 tick the stacking order and you'll see the keys we've already set so let's change the stacking order of the blue rectangle so it can move behind the green and then go in front of the green at some point in these few frames here we change the stacking order from minus one to positive one but you've got to be careful that when you add a new key there'll be interpolation between that and the previous key so if you want to change from minus one directly to a positive one the best place to do it is on frame 13, so there's no space between the previous key and the current key. So you simply double click inside the frame that you want to add the key for, and then we'll type one, and press enter. And you see the following key has also got a minus one, which shows blue going behind green, so we need this to be positive one as well. And again from 18 to 24, it's still in front, so we need to change the final key to also be positive one. Alternatively, of course, you can just highlight all of the keys after the first positive one and delete them. So once it hits frame 13, the stacking order is set to positive one and stays there for the remainder of the animation. So if we play this, you see the leg going behind and then in front. Now the next way to change the drawing order is with the column order, and this is probably the method you're most familiar with. So simply on the X sheet, the columns furthest to the right are shown in front of those to the left. So if I move these circles, they sit behind the rectangles. But if I move the column by dragging the header to the right, it'll go in front of the rectangles and back again behind. And likewise for the timeline view, which you can get to by clicking the button at the top left here, 
The column nose to the top is shown to the front and the column nose to the bottom is shown behind. So you can click and drag on this thin bar at the top to move the rectangles behind or in front. And the next method is changing the stacking order of the columns. And this works in the same way as you set it for the plastic mesh. Except for columns, you use the animate tool, which is the button at the top left here. And you can set it for the duration of the animation, or you can animate it. So we'll just set it first. So the circle column is shown behind the rectangle column. And that's just because of the ordering on the X sheet. Now by default, in the same way as on the plastic mesh levels, the stacking order of all columns is set to zero. And if you increase this to a positive number, it brings the stacking order forwards, and a negative number takes it backwards. So a column of stacking order 0 sits behind a column of stacking order 1, which sits behind a column of stacking order 2, which sits behind 3, etc, etc. So the default is 0, so we're changing the position using the animate tool. So again you can click into the toolbar and change the 0 to a positive number, 1. And even though the order on the X sheet shows the circles behind the rectangles, by changing the stacking order, the circles now are in front. So as with any of the animation values, you can click and drag on the label to adjust it instead of typing. So if you click on the letters SO and drag to the left, it goes negative, and drag to the right, it goes positive. So that's the easy way to adjust the stacking order, but it's less precise than just typing in. So I'll change it back to zero to bring it back to the default order. And now the circles are behind the rectangles again. And of course you can animate this over time, in the same way as we did for the plastic mesh. So we'll extend the exposure of this drawing to the 24 frames. So we'll leave it at zero at the beginning. And if we go to frame 12, if you click into the SO box and just press enter, it'll add another key to set it to zero. Frame 13, we'll bring it to the front. So we'll type one and press enter to add another key. So we'll leave it in front for the duration of the animation. And if we just play this, you see the circle start behind for the first half of the animation and then change to the front for the second half. And again you can see and edit these values on the function editor. So if we take a look at that. So we'll open the groups column, which is the circles column, and you'll see that SO has a little graph icon next to it. And if you turn that on, you'll see the keys we set. Zero at frame one, zero again at frame two to keep the same value, and at 13, change the stacking order one. So that's how you can change it with the animate tool, so let's actually animate with it. And as it's close to Halloween, I'll bring back Skelling. So I've set up an animation of him doing the floss, and I've added a little cape so you can better see which arm is in front and which is behind him. So his arms alternately go behind his back. Basically I just moved to the frames where I wanted the change to occur, and then changed the stacking order in the function editor. So each body part is in its own column, as you can see here and the columns are connected on the schematic view. So you can see his feet go to the hip, which goes to the body, then the body goes off to the first part of the arm, the second part of the arm, and then the hand. So it's only the first part of the arm that we want to change. Because the second part and the hand follow on because they're connected in the schematic. So we'll show the stacking order for the first part of the left arm, and again, stacking order for the first part of the right arm. So all of the body parts and the cape have a stacking order of zero. So you can see the right arm is set to negative one. So in the first part of the animation, it goes behind the cape and the body, and it goes back to zero, which means that for the rest of the animation, it goes in front. And that's because the default column order for the right arm, as you can see in the X sheet, is to the right of the body and the cloak and the background. So it goes in front of them. And the left arm is here, also to the right, and by having it a stacking order of zero, so by default it'll show in front of the body. And as we go through the animation, it then changes to negative one, so that during this part, it'll go behind the body. And so it loops back round to the beginning again, where it'll be in front. So if I play that in slow motion, the right arm goes behind, then in front, then behind, then in front. So without changing the stacking order, this wouldn't have been possible without duplicating both arms and having one behind and then one in front and swapping them at the right time without a jump in between, which wouldn't be easy. But by using the stacking order, it meant that I could build the animation first and then separately considering the order afterwards. 
Finally, you can use the Z-axis or Z-axis for my American friends to move drawings in front of or behind other drawings. And like the stacking order, you can set this up once for an animation at the start, but the power really comes into play when you either animate the drawings moving through 3D space or the camera, giving a parallax effect. And again, I could spend a whole video talking about the 3D capabilities of OpenTunes, and I may do one day, but let's have a quick look at them here. So you can see on the X sheet that I've collapsed Skelly into its own sub X sheet, so it only takes up one column. I've added a box on a separate column, which is only showing in front because it's to the right of Skelly. If I move it to the left, it'll go behind, but I'll leave it to the right for now, and then there's a background column. So to visually see these columns in 3D space, we can click on the 3D view button, which is at the top here. So the position of these three layers can be animated or just set initially at the start. So we're on frame one, we're on the red box column one, which can represent another character or piece of background. And if you change to the animate tool, and make sure you've got the position option set, then if you hold the control key while you click and drag, you can move that column forwards and backwards through space. So I'll leave the red box further forward, and I'll bring the skeleton forward a little bit, away from the background as well. And that means we can move the red box behind the skeleton, but still in front of the background. So you position the red box to where you need it on frame one, and it'll stay there for the whole animation. So if we take a look at the camera view, you can see the red box behind, and in this view you can also edit the depth position of the column. So hold the control key, and you can go left and right, you can go in front of and behind the skeleton. And again you can type the figure on the toolbar options here, or click on the Z label and then drag left and right to adjust that value. And as it's an animatable value, we can animate it. So let's go to the 3D view, and on frame 1, we'll place the box a little way in front of the character. And on frame 24, we'll put it behind the character, and then we'll copy the key from frame 1, and put that at the end here. So the column repositions itself back on frame 48. So let's see how that looks. Good, and again you can edit the values in the function editor. So if we go to column 3 and show the Z value, you see it starts at minus 13.8, goes through to positive 15 and then back to 13.8. And as with any values, you can edit them by double clicking the box and just typing. Finally, it's also worth mentioning that when you collapse columns into a sub X sheet, as I've done for the skeleton here, it not only keeps your timeline cleaner, it also flattens all of the ordering of the columns in that sub X sheet to a single column order on the timeline. So you notice the red box is either in front of the whole skeleton or behind. It'll never go between the arms and the body of the skeleton. And that's because at this level of the X sheet, the skelly column has a single stacking order of zero. Also, if you animate the camera before you collapse the sub X sheet, the camera movements aren't included. So if you wanted to animate a camera style view for just those collapsed columns, you'll have to do it another way. So that's all the ways to set and animate the position of your drawings in 3D space. Why not give it a go and see what you can come up with? And I'll see you next week with another video. And that's a Darren T.